Hi, I'm Kay Choi. Welcome back to my channel. My hair is not cooperating with me today, so we've got a little bun and some 90s bangs or tendrils going on. Today's video is an Ask K Choi Q&A and a couple of hours ago I posted on my Instagram story uh, asking for you to submit some questions. So let's actually just get right into it. I just want to get started. Got the questions here so I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom and start with tips for great consultant for promotion. If you're looking to get a promotion one of my tips is to plan ahead so while you're still in your current role ask your manager or your HR business partner or whoever the right person is at your company what the criteria criteria is for the next role or the role that you're looking to get promoted into and then use that as a guide so go down the list check off the things that you're already doing even though you're not even in that role yet because that's really good for building your case and then for the things that you still need to work on think about what actions you need to take in order to show that you're capable of doing those things so whether that is getting on a project that will allow you to grow or stretch that skill or it's about doing something like leading more meetings in a current project I don't know what that looks like specifically but that's how you can start to figure out am I actually ready for this promotion and then why how did you define your goals when you were going to start your master's by the time I started my master's I was a little over three years out of college so I had been working for a few years and then was going back into school and everyone has different reasons for getting their master's there were plenty of people in my program who came straight through from undergrad because they saw the master's as something that they needed or wanted in order to secure the first job out of college that they were you know had their eye on for me I wanted wanted to switch careers and pivot my direction. I was in public relations, but wanted to switch into consulting. So I wanted to get some sort of business education. So I feel like my overall goal was pretty straightforward. It was to get this master's and then make a switch into consulting. So all of my job application efforts were focused in that area. But I also had a general goal of just dedicating myself to my studies. And while I did have a social life and I did travel and I had a lot of fun, I still made sure that my studies came first. Again, I was going back to school after three years of being in the workforce, so I just knew that I wanted to do it right and I wanted to make sure I put in all the effort I could into my classes and my coursework. What advice would you give to someone entering post-grad life? I'm graduating in a week. I actually have a video all about this, so I'll link that in the description box down below, but my main two tips, one is just to really work hard in your first job, whatever that may be, out of college. This is where you really set the foundation for your work ethic. It's where you can make so many connections. And if you really impress the people that you work with, then that's going to help you down the line. They're going to think of you when they see a position um, in whether it's the same company or it's just through a networking connection of theirs. So just work hard and focus on making those connections with the people that you're working with. And then the second tip is just not to compare yourself to others because people are in all different you know phases when they graduate from college and it's just not fair to compare yourself to where other people are I used to do this a lot but just focus on your own journey and your own goals and congrats on your graduation by the way in a work from home situation how should one keep focus on work tasks the mind wanders off so quick I definitely struggle with this too because working from home you have so many distractions like your bed or the sofa um, and other things like doing laundry or just, I don't know, it's hard to separate yourself and focus on work when you're also in the space that you're living in. For me, a couple of things that help are creating to-do lists with different categories in terms of urgency. So things that I need to get done today versus tomorrow versus later this week. Breaking your tasks up that way just helps you focus and not get overwhelmed by all the other stuff you have to do for the rest of the week. And then the other thing I do is calendar blocking so literally putting blocks of time on your calendar to work on certain things. I think visualizing how you need to spend your time in order to get everything done is helpful. So whenever I can, if I don't have a meeting, I do try to block that time for a certain task or activity. So that's, um, I guess I would say those are my two tips there. I've got a few somewhat related questions. So what do you think of architects who want to work in consulting from audit to consulting? Is it possible? Is it possible to enter consulting from advertising. So basically, how do you get into consulting from a completely different field? I'm not going to say that you can for sure get into consulting from any of those specific fields because I personally don't know much about 
architecture or audit or advertising. But just from my experience of switching from public relations to consulting, there are plenty of transferable skills that you can find in whatever job you're in. So it's just about looking at the consulting role you're trying to apply to, as well as the culture of the company, I think, and seeing what from your experience can bolster your application and just transfer over to that new role. I think the main things that you need to be a good consultant are good project management, good client management and client relations, and then the ability to analyze things quickly and communicate them back. So again, I don't know too much about the specific industries you're asking about, but I would just say never say never when it comes to wanting to switch careers. Obviously, there are going to be some careers where you need a certain qualification or degree, but with consulting, from my experience and from what I've heard from people who work at other consulting firms, it really doesn't matter what your background is as long as you can show that you have the experience and the capability to do well in the consulting role. How are you? How are you coping with COVID? Thank you for asking how I'm doing. Um, I'm overall doing pretty well. I think in general, I have a sense of fatigue just around working from home, uh, but I am used to it now after over a year. But definitely after getting vaccinated and being fully vaccinated, which means waiting that two week period after your dose or your second dose of the vaccine, I feel like a weight has definitely been lifted off my shoulders just in terms of not being worried about getting really, really, really sick. I'm just very grateful to have access to the vaccine. So I really hope that it can be rolled out globally more quickly and if you're still in lockdown or have restrictions I'm just sending my best to you my friend Gary asked are you still a vegetarian so if you didn't know I was pretty much like 90% vegan for like two years of my life and it was a great time my digestion was great I had fun like making different recipes and figuring out how to make things vegan but once I started traveling a lot for work which was about uh, three years ago now I just personally couldn't keep up with having any restrictions on my diet so I'm no longer vegetarian or vegan I still do love vegetarian dishes and vegan dishes and I'm not like the biggest meat eater to begin with so yeah I'll still choose like vegetarian options and things like that but I don't restrict my diet anymore what is your recent reading list yesterday i just finished if i had your face by francis cha i'm still gathering my thoughts on it and i read it because one of my friends kathy recommended it to me and she wanted me to read it so we could talk about it the book's based in korea and follows several different korean women and their struggles with beauty standards and career and relationships. So Kathy, um, who is from England, uh, wanted to get my perspective on it as a Korean American. So I read that, so we need to chat about that soon. And next on my list is Crying in H Mart, which I bought, I think like over a month ago and I haven't touched it yet, but I'm reading that with a couple of friends. Uh, we have like a sort of informal book club, which we just use as a time to make sure we catch up and stay in touch. Uh, so that is next on my list. How did you speak to your employer before resigning for your master's? So I was working at this one company while I was applying to my master's and in the middle of that process, I got an offer from a different company, company B, I'll say. So with company B, I didn't tell them that I was applying to a master's when I accepted the offer. Company A knew I was applying to my master's because my manager had written a letter of recommendation for me. So they were obviously in the know. Then I moved over to company B and yeah, they didn't know that I had applied for my master's, but you know, I didn't really see a point because at that time I was just applying and I still needed to wait to hear back to see if I would even get in anywhere. And I think I told them like it was either three or four weeks. I gave a three or four week notice. Um, I felt that I wanted to give longer than a two weeks notice. So that's just when I set up time with my manager and told her that I had gotten into a master's program and was going to be leaving at the end of August. So that's how I told them. Um, I just let them know once I knew that I got in and then a few weeks before I was going to end my, you know, my time there. 
that's when I let them know. And I remember my manager was just super happy for me when I told her the news. She was surprised at first, but then she was just really excited um, for my next step in my career and my education. Should I go for an MBA or an MS if I want to advance my career and get better pay? I have a video talking about the differences between an MBA and a master's in management, so I'll link that in the description box as well. I mean, I think in general, MBAs are you know more highly regarded and bring back a higher salary for you. So if you're just thinking about the higher pay, then probably an MBA. But that being said, uh, the reasons for getting either type of degree, you know, could be different for everyone. So maybe taking the other things into consideration, including like money and time as well. Um, and then see like what payoff is most desirable for you. A couple of related questions. Would you like to work in consulting in the long term, considering traveling a lot while having family? And then do you see yourself staying in change management consulting? For now, I'm really happy at my job. And so I don't see myself leaving anytime soon. I don't have any like aspirations or you know thoughts of going anywhere else. I do always wonder if consulting is the best lifestyle for when I want to start a family. But right now we're not traveling a lot. I mean, I haven't really traveled at all for the past year, but I don't think that we're gonna be traveling as much you know, from now on, just because companies can save a lot of money and they can see that we can accomplish things virtually. Definitely, there's still that in-person element that you can't replicate. And I think for certain things, we will be traveling again, but I don't think we'll travel a lot. So that maybe is not so much of a negative anymore uh, when it comes to consulting and wanting to have a family. So all that to say, I don't really know. I don't have any specific plans to move out of consulting for now. So I think that answers your question, but again, never say never. You never know what's going to happen. Do you miss work at office? When COVID is over, is there any chance we can see this routine in video? So I am fully remote actually, even without COVID, I would have been working remotely from New York. The company I work for is based in the Midwest. So yeah, I don't have an office to go to. However, the company I work for recently got acquired by a large consulting firm and they have several offices in New York. So I think once the full transition goes through, um, I should be able to use their offices. So I definitely want to go into the office and like have some sort of routine at least a couple of times a week just to get out of the apartment. So I'll definitely be bringing you along whenever that happens um, several months into the future. I think that's a good place to end this video. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. Follow me on Instagram so you can see and contribute any other questions for future videos like this one. Let me know what else you'd like to see on this channel. A lot of you seemed to like my latest vlog um, and series that I'm calling NYC Lately. Um, so thank you for the lovely comments on that video. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.